Hey everyone, I'm TH Pine and welcome to God is a Cube. What is God is a Cube, you ask? I like to call it a self-reproducing cubes programming puzzle game. It just went through Steam Greenlight, which means it will be available on Steam eventually, and this is what it looks like. In this game, you control this cube, and the goal is to get him to the exit tile, the blue one. You do so by writing a program by using the instructions done here and putting them in the program slots over here on the right. This is a very simple level, so we only have a few slots available and only two instructions available as well. And those instructions are move relative front, which will make the cube move forward in the direction he's facing, which is indicated by the arrow. And turn relative right, which will make the cube change the direction he's facing relatively to the, relatively to the right or um, clockwise. And we can just put those instructions over here. And we can also do this or, or put one on top of another one, which will replace the, the uh, first one. And now the, if you start a program, the cube will just, oops, that's not what I wanted. The cube will just follow those instructions. So move forward three times, turn to right, move forward three times again. And that will make him move to the exit tile and solve the level. Okay, so now you might have noticed there's this little yellow cube. That's called a star. And you're supposed to collect all the stars. And at the same time, you're supposed to not collect them. And that's, that is because there are three different ways of completing a level. You can either collect all the <clears throat> you can either collect all the stars and then get to the exit tile, and that's called a star solution. Or you can collect some of the stars and get to the exit tile, but not all of the stars. That's called an incomplete solution. Or you can get to the exit tile without collecting any stars whatsoever. That's called a secret solution. And if we take a look at the end level chart here. That uh, will show our score, and the score is um, determined by the number of instructions we used. So less instructions is a better score. And you see there are bars with different colors. And if we activate the tooltip, you can read that the yellow bars are um, the number of people who, uh, who got a star solution with that certain amount of instructions. Violet bars are um, the number of people who found a secret solution with that number of instructions. And orange bars are um, is the same for incomplete solutions. So you can't see an orange bar here because there's only one star available in this level, so it's not possible to get an incomplete solution. You either get all the stars or none of them. Uh, but in, others, uh, level, uh, in other levels, you will see an, an orange bar or multiple orange bars, in fact, as well. So now this chart tells us that there is a better solution than the one we have right now. There's a solution with five instructions only. So let's try doing that. Well, the first thing I didn't told you yet, and I didn't tell you yet a lot of things about this game, is that the program actually loops. So whenever the last command gets executed, or last instruction, the program will loop back and start with the first command or instruction again. They're called instructions, but I will probably call them commands from time to time. Um, it's, it's the same, anyway. So. If we just remove the last three instructions, the program will move forward three times, then turn relative right, and then loop back and start again with, with moving forward three times. And that results in the same instruction pattern as we had before, which results in the same path. And there we go, that's the solution with, with five instructions only. Okay, now it's apparently possible to get a, a secret solution as well. Well, that's possible for every level, spoilers. Um, and um, that means we have to find a way to the exit without actually collecting the star. Well, how do we do that? We go the other way around. We go this way, down here, and then there. So there are two issues with this. First, this gap, which it actually isn't an issue, but it might look, to one, uh, look as one for you. Um, but I'm gonna explain why this is not an issue later. The other problem is that we have to turn uh, we have to turn left or counterclockwise, and we only have the turn relative right um, instruction available. Well, how do you turn left when you can only turn right? You turn right three times. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna start by turning right. Um, so we face this direction, south. Uh, then we move forward three times, and then we. Um, turn right again three times and then we will loop back so actually we only turn right th uh, two times which will loop back turn right a third time which makes us face this direction and then we move forward again so you can look at that there we go nice and you might have noticed the cube didn't actually fall in the gap the reason for that is that the cube will only fall or will not fall I should say as long as one of its its edges is still connected to an edge so um, if we slow this down a little bit and look at it again, you see that the edge actually gets highlighted, which means the cube is connected to the edge, so he will not fall down. And now he's connected to the other edge while he's pay uh, moving in this direction, and that will prevent him from falling down. And so he just moves over this 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 gap 
smoothly, uh, smooth, very smoothly. There we go. And um, yeah, that is the secret solution with uh, seven instructions. Okay, cool. Let's go to the level list and um, let's take a look at a few other levels. So there are five worlds or chapters in this game. The first two one are um, basic is maybe the wrong. Well, now basic is the right word, but not easy necessarily. So. The game asks you when you start if you are a programmer or not, and if you say yes, it will just for fast forward you to the third chapter and just skip the first two ones. Uh, the reason for that is that the first two levels are, or, or chapters are only uh, using regular move and turn instructions and no conditionals or any other advanced um, logic uh, instructions whatsoever. So those are very, very basic, but not necessarily easy. Some of the levels are actually pretty tricky. Um, they require a deep understanding of how the how the how the movement on the edges thingy I just showed you works. I'm going to explain that a little bit more uh, in detail in a moment as well. Um, especially if you want to try to get a better score or try to aim for a no star solution stuff like that. So those levels are still interesting if you're into optimizing, especially. And uh, uh, some of them, uh, I play, it looks like I didn't play them, but I actually did. But this is a, I, then I redownloaded a new version of the game and um, it didn't transfer the save files. So um, it looks like I didn't play them, but I just um, decided to just skip to the third chapter. You can actually um, play all the chapters individually. You don't have to complete a chapter to get to the next one, but you have to complete all the levels in a chapter in order to proceed to the next one. Okay, let's take a look at the third chapter because this one inst um, introduces conditionals and you might have noticed it takes me a while to get into the level the animations for this are way too long it's the, in general the user interface is not great like those menus look pretty terrible in the first place um, I hope they get improved at some point also this is your tutorial girl um, I'm not sure why she's an anime character doesn't really fit the style of the game I think but maybe it does I'm not sure it's a little weird <coughs> anyway um, as I said, the, the UI doesn't look great, and it, at certain points, especially in, in the level select screen, it doesn't behave good either. I'm going to show you a little bit more of that in a moment as well. But let's talk about this level first. So this level um, has two big changes. First, the instructions are not a straight line anymore. We can actually uh, we actually have a branching path here, and also we have a um, new instruction stone here, um, which are which is a logic gate and two um, true gates or true and false gates room gates and um, so yeah let's talk about this first so let's just put some regular instructions in here and see what happens because it looks a little weird right um, what, what happens if we actually uh, have branching paths well let's step through it step by step and um, first this instruction is getting executed and then the signal of the program or the program flow will split into two and now the next two instructions will be executed right after each other. So it will first execute this one, turn relative right, and then this one, move relative right. So it will first turn, and now it will move relative right, so in this direction. And now the, the program continues moving, so the next two commands that's, that are getting executed are this one and this one. And you can see it moves, and then it turns, and then it loops back to the start and starts from the first instruction again. Okay, so this is how this works. Now, how does the logic stuff work? It actually is kind of similar to how uh, Shenzhen IO does it. You basically have some instructions that um, set an internal state. So when this this instruction is um, is, is being executed, then it, it will um, check for a wall relative leave in or a wall in front of the cube it's called it's called a detect wall relative front which means when this instruction is going to execute as i said it will check if there is a wall in front of the cube and if that's the case the internal well condition state i guess is set to true and if that's not a case so if there's no wall then it's going to be set to false and um, that will not do anything on its own however if you place a room gate down then this will do something because the room gate true will only let the program continue through this instruction and execute the instructions behind that or that come after this one um, if the internal state is true and the same goes for the room gate false this will only let the, um, the, the code pass if um, the internal state is false so if we now um, put some other instructions behind that when there is a wall we want to turn right 
and when there is no wall we want to move forward and now we execute the step by step you can see the first instruction being called is this the check there's no wall in front of the cube so the internal state is getting gonna, gonna be set to false um, and now the program splits and now you can see the red uh, the, the true gate is actually has a red border now because it will block the program flow here because the internal state is false not true while the true uh, the false gate is has a green border because it lets the program flow um, continue here and if we continue to step it will only continue here and not execute this instruction so it will only move forward and now it loops back to the start does the same thing again does the check there's still no wall move forward again and again and now it checks, oh, there is a wall in front of me. The situation swaps and this instruction is getting executed instead of this one. And the cube turns to the right. And if we just let the program continue, he will collect all the stars and get to the exit. Okay, nice. So uh, now you can see there's a tiny orange bar here. Um, but we're going to not bother with that and instead we're going to try to hit this purple bar over here which is at three instructions no two instructions actually i think it might be is it two or three i forgot i think it's actually only two um and we are not allowed to collect any stars so we have a move relative front instruction and we have a move relative right instruction so we move sidewards without changing direction of facing so um if we just do this um you will see that this actually will work and now comes the interesting part because now we have one of those um, situations again where the cube is connected to the edge because the next step is this one okay now it's still connected to this edge so it will not actually fall down now the next instruction however is move relative front this would require the cube to flip over to the front so he would flip to the tile over here where the star is however Flipping over would mean that he loses the connection to this edge because he will only be connected with the well with the with the corner, I guess, um, which is not enough to hold the cube. So instead of doing that, uh, with, um, instead of doing that, the cube will actually fall down and skip this instruction. So the next step is the cube falls down, and now the next instruction is move relative right again, and that makes the cube move over there and get into goal. So this is how these edge mechanics work or this fall gravity mechanics i'm not sure how to call it um the sticky cube mechanics maybe and uh, it's it's little it, it's pretty subtle it's not quite um intuitive how it works but it actually creates a lot of interesting situations and makes you think um quite in quite interesting ways from time to time in some levels so um yeah it's a nice touch to make a very simple mechanics or a simple very simple well the game has very simple moving mechanics on first glance but this makes it a little bit more in-depth and a little bit more complicated and tricky in some parts okay let's go to chapter 4 shall we for some reason chapter 4 introduces new mechanics that do the same thing as instructions um, from earlier uh, chapters so let's start by deleting everything um, unfortunately, I cannot prepare this. Every time I load the level, there will be the instructions from the last solution in here, <laughs> which is a little unfortunate. Um, but I guess usually that's not a problem. It's just a, just a little annoying for recording this video. So that shouldn't really bother, bother you. Anyway, so this chapter introduces runes. Well, we had some runes already, actually, the rune gates. But this one int uh, introduces ru move runes and um, conditional runes, which you will see in the next level. A rune move or move rune, well it's called rune move, a rune move instruction I guess, um, will basically move the cube whenever it's getting activated, but the, the, like what the move will do is dependent on other instructions connected to this one. So when there's another con instruction connected to this instruction, like uh, rune south, or it, it has to be a rune instruction. So those are not the same instructions as the one you saw earlier. Those are rune instructions. They don't actually do anything on their own. Um, so if we, um, let's just demonstrate, if, if I put them here, the cube will not actually do anything. He would just sit there and not do anything and this loops over and over again and nothing happens. So instead we have to connect them to these uh, move runes and uh, this will make the cube uh, move south because the move rune is connected to a south rune and now we just have to um, path this so we go south then we go one two three times to the uh, west I guess east Never mind. 
I'm bad at directions. Actually not, but sometimes they confuse east and west. And then we go north. That's also a thing with games that have this diagonal um, perspective. You never know, is that north uh, or up? Or is that north or up or however you want to call it? Uh, in this game, um, north is in this direction and, and uh, east is in this direction. It's actually important to call them um, north and east in this game and not up and down because the game is actually three-dimensional as you saw earlier. So the cube can actually move up and down as well. We actually have runes for that here as well. Um, so we, the creeps should be there now, so we should be fine by moving east a little more. And now we can see that the cube will actually just follow the path we did put in here. So this is basically doing the same thing as the regular move instructions, but well, with a different, in a different way. And um, yeah, that's a little weird, but it gets weirder um, because if we go to the next level, um, it gets even more strange. Oh, by the way, I want to show you some UI issues. So one of the UI issues is I cannot click this level here. It looks like I could just switch to the next level, but I can't. And I have to go back to the chapter view and then click it. And it gets even worse, um, or the same problem is true for um, chapter borders. So while I can select all the levels in this chapter, I cannot select the, board, the, the levels from those chapters, even though they are visible on the screen. If I click them, nothing happens. I have to go back, select the chapter, select the level, eh, and then start a level, which takes a while. This is, this is pretty unnecessary and feels very weird. But anyway, let's go to this level and uh, do conditionals in a different way. <laughs> So, let's delete this. You didn't saw nothing. So, this level in introduces rune detectors, or rune detector instructions. They are similar to conditionals, but they are the rune version. So if we put that there, this will not actually do anything. But if you connect it to a rune terrain and a rune relative front, it will actually check for terrain or walls relative in, uh, in front of the cube. If we combine this with other runes, we can actually create more complex checks. And this is the big difference to the regular conditions. Like the regular condition was just check for wall in front of you or check for wall left uh, to your left or something along those lines. While, while this allows me to uh, be more uh, detailed, I could, for example, um, design a command not with the instructions I have available here, but um, well, actually I can, I can demonstrate that. I can make a check. So this will actually check for a wall three tiles in front of me because there are three relative front runes connected to this detector. Um, so if we step through this, this will actually um, be, be true. Well, it doesn't help right now. Well, let's, get a, let's get a gate here. Um, so this will actually result in faults because one, two, three, there's no cube here but if we step over this uh, no wall here uh well nothing happens because i this uh, um i used the wrong gate okay let's do that again so there's no cube here uh, no wall here so he will not um actually uh, the, the internal state is false so he will pass through that gate um move forward uh, well relative right i'm an idiot that's not how this works we don't have a move relative for yeah okay anyway you see how this works right so this is a little bit more detailed Okay, how, how do we use this to solve this level? Well, we combine it with the move rune. So, if there is a wall in front of us, we want to move forward. We do that by uh, putting a move rune here and the true gate and then say move relative front. And if there is no wall, actually if the other way around. If there is no wall, if we want to do that. And if there is a wall, we want to turn relative right. And now you can see that the cube will actually exactly do that, collect all the stars and get to the end of the level. So it's a little weird because we have instructions that do basically the same as other instructions, just in a different way. That's a little strange. It feels a little unnecessary. Um, I'm not sure what my opinion on that is. I think it's pretty unnecessary and it should. I think one of the mechanics should be uh, removed, either the ruined thingies or the regular instructions. Um, the rune thingies are obviously a little bit more complicated to set up because they require multiple runes. They're also more detailed, however, and I think they are a little bit more interesting. However, they feel 
um, they feel more more clumsy, I guess, because it's less straightforward to implement them, which makes it more interesting to me, though. So I think that's actually a plus point, maybe at least for some people. So I would I would like to only have one of the options: either have rune move and uh, a rune detector, or have those straightforward commands and the straightforward conditionals, and not both, because that's just confusing and weird. Anyway, let's get back to the level list. And uh, get to the really nitty gritty part of the game. Um, reproducing cubes. Well, not actually reproducing them, but reproducing repro other ones. Um, I'm going to talk about reproducing cubes in a little bit later. But let's talk about this level first. So, this level... I'm actually not going to bother deleting this code. This level introduces a new instruction, or this chapter. Rune create a cube. And this one has to be connected to a rune reference. I'm not sure why... And there might be a reason for that, I didn't figure it out yet, but it has to be correct, connected to a rune reference, which then has to be connected to um, an object like cube energy wide. So this means when this instruction is going to get, or and, and also a direction. So if this instruction is going to get executed, it will create, uh, it will create a cube, um, it will create a white energy cube in front of the cube. So... Uh, actually, not in front, relative down, so below the cube. And what this program does, it checks for a wall below the cube and then either moves forward or create a cube below the cube. So if we if we step through this, you can see that the cube will actually create cubes uh, below him. So he will build his own bridge. And that creates some interesting levels as well if it gets more complicated. Um, however, this is not actually, as I said, reproducing those cubes because those cubes are just dumb dumb wall cubes they not actually have any logic or execute code as well or something along those lines however um i think that that will be a feature in the final game um because it was a feature in a previous beta version basically um so the, the i didn't solve all the levels in chapter five yet but so far it only let me produce regular cubes so i'm not sure if it will actually uh, allow me to produce cubes that will actually execute code as well um, but I don't think it will but if you take a look here in the main menu there's a button deprecated modes and if you click there there's a factory mode and a creative mode and I think I didn't really dig into those too deeply because I don't have a tutorial and stuff but I think it's possible with those to actually um, create cubes that produce other cubes or something but the interface is very unintuitive there's no tutorial so i didn't really bother with it oh i quit the game that's not what i wanted let's restart shall we um there we go so that's a little weird but uh, you definitely saw uh, can see some of those things happening in the trailer of the game and so um i'm pretty sure that will be a thing later on and that can become pretty interesting i think having to program a cube that creates other cubes that execute the same program again or maybe another program who knows at this point uh that's that's potentially a very interesting promise however the game is still in production so we're not sure or i'm not sure how this will turn out in the end but i'm definitely gonna check it out when it finally um, releases on steam so i'm probably gonna make an update video on that um later but um let's talk about what is there right now because there's a lot of different levels as you can see here that's like i don't know uh, how many levels are there per chapter one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven that should be around the same so over 50 levels i guess and um that's that's actually a decent number however they are like the number of different level or the, the number of ch the um, chapters or what every chapter um provides you and uh, is is very weird because those two chapters are very basic as i said earlier and those uh, chapters get more interesting and interesting and it feels like the game is not actually complete yet it feels like there's more levels missing using actually all the mechanics of the game because all those chapters still feel like tutorials teaching you uh those new mechanics not not quite like tutorials like the levels are actually challenging and they um well require you to to learn to think different every time and learn new tricks and uh, new ways of using the things but every chapter introduces a new mechanic da -di -la -di -la. and it feels like those chapters are too short to actually explore all the possibilities of all the combinations of those mechanics so i think there should be more levels after this or maybe yeah probably after this that 
tackles more complex problems um, or more well not necessarily complex but more interesting um, problems or just more problems and the first two chapters while being interesting feel very repetitive at some point because yeah they are all clever the level design in this game is actually pretty good um so so all levels feel pretty clever and challenging but it's the same thing over and over again because you're very limited in the instruction sets um that are available to you you can skip it at every time like you can just solve the first few ones then skip to the next chapter solve the first few one of this one and then go to the more interesting chapters uh if you want to or just skip it all together by telling the game hey i'm a programmer you can just get me to the third chapter if you want to um but it, it's it's still it feels a little honestly i don't think those ch chapter or those levels should be cut out but i think there should be more levels um added to the end but as i said this game is still in production pretty early so uh i guess we're gonna see more later on i definitely hope so okay let's talk about more a few more things so uh, the option menu, for example. The option menu is very limited, but I guess that's okay for this game. We have language options, English and French. I guess the developer is probably French. Uh, resolution options, full screen mode or window mode. No borderless window, unfortunately. Um, then a few quality presets. Um, a volume slider. Um, only one. That's usually a bad thing, but in this game there's only music and no other sounds. So that's good, I guess. The music is quite, well, fitting, I guess. It's chill out, spheric music as you can hear in the background i think it fits the tone of the game quite well um nothing nothing special though but it's 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 it it fits well i think as i said uh you can activate the wireframe that makes it a little easier to um see the the cubes or the tiles uh let me demonstrate this takes forever oh yeah i'm going to talk about that in a moment as well uh so you can see um that this will actually change let's just do it by this there we go that turns it off and Oops, not tutorial. No, no, no. Skip. <laughs> that was the wrong button. No, no, I'm out now. Okay. Anyway, uh, it, it basically makes it easier to see um, where the cubes are, but I don't think it's really necessary. You can reset the save. So this, this option menu is not brilliant, but it's okay. It does the trick. There's not much uh, you can do uh, in this game anyway, option-wise. It would be nice to have a bottles window mode, obviously. Um, besides that, not really necessary. So at the end of every chapter, you get a cutscene. Well, you're supposed to get a cutscene. You don't get yet, but the game tells you that you will see one when the game is actually completed. Um, there is a cutscene at the beginning of the game. It's very weird. It evol involves cubes and gods and stuff like that. It's it's very strange. So I guess we're going to see more of that in the final game. And you might have noticed uh, that there are cubes in the cubes here. Basically, those are indicators for how, for the ways you solve this level. So if there's a yellow cube. In the in this side of the level that means you found a star solution for this level if there's a purple cube or blue cube over here that means you found a secret solution and if there is a where is it there a gray cube over here then it says that you only found an incomplete solution so far so that's how that works and yeah the, ma the navigation of levels is very annoying as i explained earlier because it takes so long to get from one level to the other. But if you're just um, completing the levels after each other, you can just use the next level button and it works fine. So I guess that's not too big of an issue, but it's just unnecessary and could be improved, I think. Um, so uh, yeah, it's called God is a Cube. Um, it will be available on Steam at some point, because as I said earlier, it went through Steam Greenlight and well, got green greenlit, so we're gonna see that. I hope the UI improves quite a bit um, graphically and, uh, well, usability, I guess. Um, so that would be good. Besides that, I want to see more levels, especially ones with reproducing cubes. That would be great, like really reproducing cubes, not just creating some random white cubes. So that would be amazing. Maybe I'm I'm unfair here though because I didn't solve the last few levels uh, yet. So maybe it does that already. I'm not sure, but I don't think so. The, the levels didn't look like they would do. So maybe. Anyway, I'm pretty sure we're gonna see that in the last in the final game. There will also be a level editor if you believe the trailer. Um, so that might be good. And this looks like a really promising and interesting programming puzzle game, which uses some interesting, unique mechanics, especially how you write the program. Like having those slots which can branch off and have different shapes. That's actually a unique idea because it, yeah, it just forces you to fit your program in that. And by, by talking about that, um, I got one last important point I want to talk about. 
the game ha is in a really weird state because it's definitely like something I would call a close puzzle game. Um, what I mean by that is that um, is a puzzle game which has one or maximum two intended solutions for every level and usually there are no not too many other options and the opposite of that would be an open uh, puzzle game or some people call it an engineering puzzle game like something like something like infinite factor god damn it infinite factory for example um where you can just do whatever you want and have lots of options and lots of different ways of doing something. Um, none of those are good or bad puzzle ways of doing a puzzle game, just different ways and some people prefer one of the over the other. I usually prefer the open style. This game is more close but it doesn't really feel like that because the, de the developer is actually apparently pretty good at puzzle design and every level, it, fe it seems like every level has a lot of um, intended solutions, but multiple different ones. Like obviously, it, like that's quite obvious by having the secret and the star solution. But also, then there are multiple subsets of those where you get, can get, or sub solutions of those where you can get a better instruction score like that. And it feels like, at least all the all the solutions I found so far felt like intended solutions because they usually fit quite nicely in the given program pattern and stuff like that. So it feels like the design of this game is just very good at creating puzzles with different solutions, but all the solutions are intended. So he thought about all the solutions while creating it. Um, and that's quite interesting to me because that's very unique. Usually you have levels in games like, uh, in puzzle games you either have levels that actually have just one intended solution, solution, solution. And if you find another one, it feels a little hacky, a little tricky, and it's usually not what the designer had in mind. Uh, or you have those open level designs where you have like tons of options where Usually there's no intended solution whatsoever, like in most Sectronic games, for example. So this one is weirdly in the middle of that, and I like that. It feel, To me, it, it feels like the design of this game is just really, really good at puzzle design. And that's a good thing to, uh, to a good skill to have if you're programming a puzzle game, I guess. So, um, yeah. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to playing this more, especially if it's getting a little bit more polished. Um, because so far it doesn't look so great as I mentioned and stuff like that But yeah, as I said, it's called God is a cube. Uh, it will be available on Steam at some point I'm gonna keep you up to date. I'm TH Point. Thanks all for watching. Have fun and see you next time